I've spent the past month learning how to speedrun Halo Combat Evolve. Well, I actually first started learning tricks almost 10 years ago with the release of the Master Chief Collection. Every level in the MCC has a part-time and you unlock an achievement for beating that level's part-time. I started watching a speedrunner named Naked Eli who released guides in all of these levels but unfortunately hasn't been heard from in 7 years, press F to pay respects. This also led to me getting the Go Roped achievement which is unlocked by beating Halo CE on Legendary in under 3 hours. It's actually not nearly as daunting as it sounds. For starters, it adds up your best times for each individual level rather than counting your best full game playthrough. Second, the world record for a full game legendary playthrough when MCC came out was 1 hour 31 minutes and 27 seconds, which you can see on HaloRuns.com. To get the Go Roped achievement, you really didn't have to be anywhere close to record pace on any of your levels. This isn't to say it's not hard, because it definitely is. Halo C Legendary in general is really hard. I see comments all the time saying, man, it takes me two hours just to get through Truth and Reconciliation. If you try to run it without practicing and without knowing what you're doing, you'll pull a Cody Miller, who infamously was supposed to speedrun CE on Legendary at a Games Done Quick event. What actually happened was it took him over four hours to beat it, which doesn't sound that bad until I tell you he also had to lower the difficulty to Heroic on Halo and then Normal on the Library, and it still took him over four hours to beat. But I've already gotten the Go Roped achievement in the past, so I wanted to push myself. The Go Roped achievement was for getting a total time with all your best levels added up of under 3 hours on Legendary. 3 hours is 180 minutes. For this video, my goal was to get under 90 minutes. The Naked Eli runs I mentioned are all you need for getting the part-time achievements in Go Roped, but if you add up all of his times from those guides, they add up to 1 hour 42 minutes and 41 seconds, which for you math whizzes out there is 102 minutes. So just following those guides wasn't going to cut it for me. I needed to learn new strats and speedrun routes. And part of what got me back into Halo speedrunning was watching the Halo devs react to speedrun video. I hadn't seen any speedruns since Naked Eli several years ago, and yeah, there's so much new stuff since then. Because it had been years since I tried Legendary speedrunning and I was effectively starting over, I didn't want to jump right into all of the hardest tricks right away, I wanted to lay down a foundation to just be able to get through at a pretty fast time, and in the future build and add new strats to cut my time even further. I'll be sure to point out throughout this video whenever I'm doing old school strats or if I'm doing a newer strat. Like I said, I spent a bit of time learning each level, and this past Friday night and Saturday I recorded myself running each level. Because I didn't want to delay this video, my cutoff was whatever the best times I recorded on those two days would be what I showed in this video. If you'd like to see any of my runs completely unedited, I have a video linked in the description where you can watch each level without my commentary and edits. I'm also planning on live streaming full game attempts sometime in the near future so y'all can hang out with me as I choke. If you're interested in Halo speedrunning, then be sure to check out HaloRuns.com. If you enjoy this video, be sure to give it a like because as you'll see, I put a lot of time into it. We're gonna go level by level, and I'm gonna show and explain tricks as well as routes and optimize combat, and we'll see if I could get my total time below 90 minutes. Let's go. You may think it's the first level that Pillar of Autumn is the easiest. Nope. It's actually one of the most random levels in the entire game. This is part of what makes Halo fun to run on Legendary. Variants. Most encounters don't play out the exact same way every time, so when it comes to combat, there's certainly an element of memorization and there are encounters that do happen the same way, but there's a lot of skill involved and you have to be able to adapt. This variance, by the way, we call RNG. A good example of RNG is what's on your screen currently. Sometimes two grunts run out, sometimes two elites run out, sometimes one elite and two grunts runs out, sometimes three elites run out. It's completely random. For this level, there weren't really any big tricks for me to learn. Well, there is one newer trick called Stair Skip that involves a shield bump and out-of-bounds platforming, but it's pretty hard and I decided to run it the classic way rather than putting extra time into learning that trick. For now, at least. But as you can see on the screen, it's mostly just running by enemies. What makes this level random is that in a lot of these rooms you'll make it through 9 times out of 10, but there's always that one time, and each room has its own one time, so there are multiple spots where you can die pretty easily. On the positive, this level is really short, and as long as you hit all of the checkpoints, even a run with a couple deaths isn't going to be too bad. One thing I had to learn before I started was backpack reloading. You may have noticed that sometimes I'll shoot the magnum or assault rifle, switch weapons, and then switch back and have a full magazine. If you double tap reload, you can perform actions that would normally cancel your reload like switching weapons or throwing grenades without interrupting your reload. That's why it's called backpack reloading, because you're reloading your gun while it's in your backpack. There really isn't anything in this level that I want to stop the video to talk about. It's pretty straightforward, as you can see. So we'll jump right into my time. On Pillar of Autumn, my best time was 4 minutes and 42 seconds. Now we can move on to the rest of the speedrun, which I think it's a lot more interesting. Halo starts off with a grenade jump that took me an embarrassing amount of time to get down. 
This is where if you're playing on PC, the Halo Checkpoint Manager helps a lot. I'll link it in the description. With the Checkpoint Manager, I set a checkpoint right here and just practice the jump over and over again for at least an hour. I'm still not 100% on it, but probably 99%. The jump itself only saves a few seconds versus walking across the bridge, but as you can see, there's no enemies around because doing that jump skips a trigger. If you walk across the bridge, there'd be a squad here, a dropship, and two banshees. They can also spawn if you take too long in the lower section, so you want to immediately run to the side and do the jump. In this section, you're supposed to stay with the marines and protect them from the covenant. We are doing the exact opposite. There are six marines and we need at least five of them to die. This skips dialogue that would normally happen before each dropship lands and speeds it up so much that you can actually skip one of the dropships entirely if you kill every enemy from the second and third almost immediately. But if the marines see you shoot and kill two other marines, every marine across the entire level turns on you. So we mostly have to kill them by letting the Covenant kill them and through means the game considers accidental, like grenades and running them over. The dropship clears are definitely the hardest part of the level. In this run I messed up my grenade placements on the third ship and actually didn't get the drop skip so I had to fight all five. Normally this would be the one that you skip. It costs about 30 seconds depending on how fast you can clear it. At least two and sometimes three elites spawn at this ship and it's the hardest to be on time for so missing drop skip can really screw up a run. Here, there's a Warthog Slam you can do to get up the side. I missed it. That's something I should probably practice more because I get it maybe half the time. But what you're essentially trying to do is hit yourself with the back of the Warthog so you get slammed into the side of the wall and launched up. It's not that big of a deal because, as you can see, you can just jump on your Warthog and then walk up and hit the button. Because there are still enemies, we skip a cutscene that would normally play, then you shoot your Marine and keep going. When we pass by this lifeboat, we want to grab the sniper rifle, a health pack if you need it, and a frag. Here there's another Warthog trick to launch yourself to the door of the structure, and this one I actually hit. In each of these sections, you're supposed to save Marines. But if all the Marines are dead, instead of losing and having to revert, the game lets you move on to the next section, so we're just gonna drive around and kill Marines. At the rock side, you throw this grenade, hopefully more to the right than where I threw it. And what this does is make sure the Marines on top of the rock are looking down and engage the Covenant. Because if they're fighting the Covenant, they won't see you kill them. After they're dead, you drive into the rocks to hit a trigger and move on. There are more marines on the rocks, but the Covenant will kill them for you. The final section is really straightforward. You don't have to kill any more marines, you just have to clear it. We want to do this one last because it's the fastest to clear and only one dropship comes in. It's also very important and tradition that after clearing this section, you find a grenade pile and grenade the Warthog. That's Halo, the level, not the game. My final time was 12 minutes and 31 seconds. Had I gotten drop skip in the Warthog Slam, I could have gotten below 12, but it is what it is. This brings my total time between Pillar of Autumn and Halo to 17 minutes and 13 seconds. Next up is one of the two hardest levels in the game. I was both excited and nervous to learn Truth and Reconciliation. Excited because TNR is my favorite level in CE and nervous because it's really hard. My first time running through the entire level, my time was over 23 minutes. Really bad. For this video, I spend more time playing this level than any other trying to get a good time. It has one of the harder tricks I'll do in the game, but it also just has a lot of difficult combat. This starts right away, and the opening section is, for me, the hardest part of the entire level. And what you're seeing on screen isn't the cleanest, but hey, I got through. At this point, I diverge from the current runs again, and I do an old school safe route where you pick up the active camo and run past everyone. On the lift waves, the next wave comes down when only one enemy is left alive, so you can time this where as soon as only one enemy is left, you can throw a frag, snipe the elite, and wipe out an entire wave immediately. This is important for clearing fast, but also because you want to keep all of your marines alive. If any of them die, you have to wait for reinforcements before going into the ship, which costs like 30 seconds. When I was a kid, the belly fight terrified me. My strategy would be to hide behind one of the doors, but now I gotta say, this section isn't that hard with practice. As long as you kill each wave fast, it's not bad. The most common cause of death for me is being grenaded by my own marines. In speedruns now, they do an out-of-bounds trick to skip this in the next room entirely, called Belly Skip. This room is the RNG room. It's called that because it sucks. I had several really good runs, better pace than this one, get killed here because of where the stupid elite spawns. You can't open the doors on your left yourself, so you have to manipulate the elite to open a door or hope that you get lucky and a grunt spawns right next to a door. The hangar bay is one of what Goat Rope used to call the Big Four, meaning at the time it was one of the four hardest tricks in the game. This is the triple grenade jump. How exactly you do it can vary, but basically on this first jump you're trying to get two plasmas and one frag all to explode at the same time to give you enough momentum to grenade jump to the second floor. The reason this doesn't kill you is because the overshield gives you temporary invulnerability while it's charging. The second jump gets you on the dropship, and the third jump gets you on the third floor. This skips so much combat and saves so much time. 
On runs now, there's a single grenade jump from the bottom floor to the top floor, but as of right now, I don't know how to do it. From this point, you are just clearing hallways as fast as you can until you get to keys. The key's rescue sucks. Him and the rest of the marines have a very strange habit of grenading themselves and ruining runs. So you're basically trying to stay far enough ahead to clear everything out for him so he doesn't kill himself. The marine I killed at the start of the escort and the marine here turn keys hostile. You then have to alert the elites in the bridge, kill them, and boom, level over. Which if you know this level it's not supposed to be, you're supposed to go back to the hangar. The problem is the grenade jump we did broke the triggers in the hangar. Captain Keys is also supposed to have dialogue, but because he's hostile, he won't say it. So the mission just ends. My final time on TNDAR, this is the time I'm most proud of, was 11.38. This brings my total time so far to 28 minutes and 51 seconds. 11.38 is pretty quick for this level, but CE really opens up from here and the next three levels are three of the quickest in the entire game. Silent Cartographer is definitely the most famous CE speedrun level. It starts off with this epic beach fight while the Halo theme is playing and we're gonna go fight the Covenant. Just kidding, we're gonna go the complete opposite direction and walk on the beach. We hop in this Warthog and now we mentally prepare ourselves for one of the harder tricks in the game. Sometimes I get a checkpoint here and sometimes I don't. If you're on Xbox, that's a really useful checkpoint to get for practice. On PC, you would just use a checkpoint manager like I did. This is another trick where that really helped. This door is supposed to close before you can get through it, but you can drive your Warthog towards it, turn hard to the right, and have the back of the Warthog hit you and fling you through. That's part one of the trick. Part two is to shoot here to skip a cutscene and land below so that you don't die. I lost my shields, but if you do it exactly right, you won't take any damage. I diverge here from current runs. I fall in the overshield because I do an old school escape instead of what's called stick stack, which is the hardest trick in current CE speedruns. Instead, I pick up this active camo and simply walk my way out as fast as I can before the camo goes away. And that's pretty much it for Silent Cartographer. This was one that I hated before I was consistent on the Warthog Slam and Drop, and after you get it down, it's really fun. My final time on SC was 4 minutes and 31 seconds. This brings my total time to 33 minutes and 22 seconds. SC was trick heavy, the next level has one trick. AOTCR isn't the shortest level to speedrun, but I think it's definitely the easiest. This opening in the next room is the only combat in the level, and it's pretty optimized. If you run through the way I do here, you'll never die. I get down to one red and that's pretty unusual, I normally have more health here. This is one of my favorite tricks in the entire game, and you get a checkpoint right before it so if you mess it up you can quickly retry. Stand in the middle of this line, kill any sleeping grunts in your left or right, which is RNG, and wait for the banshee's right wing to start crossing where the canyon wall gets dark and crouch. Then wait for the banshee to fly into the wall, walk into the door and to the right, and hey, free banshee. This lets you fly through most of the level. This is a relatively new trick, it's only a few years old. The old trick was the bridge fall, which was way harder than this and slower. I was nervous about learning Banshee Grab because I thought it would be really hard and precise, but it's not. It's one of the easier tricks in the game, at least for me. There are a couple of teleports you can do with the Banshee further in, so I will tell you that I don't do those, but I'm not even going to show me flying to the end of the level. No enemies will spawn anywhere else, this is literally it. My final time on AOTCR was 5 minutes and 14 seconds, which if you didn't know about Banshee Grab you would say is impossible because this is a really long mission. This brings my total time thus far to 38 minutes and 36 seconds. Next up, we're gonna meet the Flood, but not when we're supposed to. 343 Guilty Spark is an interesting level. There's one trick you'll see in a minute that's really hard and took me a while to get down, but now I pretty much always get it first or second try. Because that trick is really hard, I always overlook a couple other tricks on this level. Starting with this grenade jump, super easy yet I still mess it up sometimes. And that jump is really important because it allows you to skip most of the swamp. Mm -hmm. 
The really hard trick is called Reveal Room Skip. You have to get through these enemies guarding the door, kill some of the grunts, and do one of the trickier grenade jumps in the game because you have to jump with different timing than on most grenade jumps. If you jump like you normally would, you'll go through the floor, but we're trying to go into the floor, so you have to jump earlier than you would normally. You have to do weird out-of-bounds platforming. There's a gap in the floor here that you have to cross, but you can't jump because you'll get out of the floor. So you have to crouch and uncrouch in a way that you bounce across the gap and land on this. Then with some tightrope walking and a jump at the right time, you end up in here, which is way past where the flood first shows up and right before the second elevator. <laughs> This trick after the elevator always screws me up. It's called camo jump, sometimes referred to as camo jumo. It's hard to explain, but it's basically just a really tight crouch jump. You have to jump as late as possible and crouch at just the right time in the pillar thing to make it across. This grenade jump is actually the easy route. I still mess it up sometimes, but the alternative that you'd see in record runs now is way harder. Here you do the exact same jump as camo jump, this time with flood shooting at you. But that's the entire facility. I really like it because there's basically no RNG. It just comes down to whether or not you can pull the tricks off. The swamp, however, does have RNG. The flood spawn with random weapons, and you need to get a plasma weapon from one of them. This is to kill the sentinels who also spawn in different locations. The sentinels are allies, but the level end trigger is actually tied to them dying. Once they're both dead, then a timer starts before the level ends. Reveal room skip is a trick while practicing I seriously consider just giving up on. Like, I didn't think I'd be able to do it consistently in runs. So with me sticking through it and getting it pretty much down, my time on this level being 4 minutes and 38 seconds is one that I'm pretty proud of. And that time brings my total to 43 minutes and 14 seconds. And next up, we have everyone's favorite Halo level. I'll be totally honest, the attempt I used for this video was my first recorded attempt, and because I made it through and nothing went wrong, I just went with it because I didn't want to play the library again. There's a newer trick that speedrunners use on this level called flood bumping. I did not do this. Instead, I used the route I learned over 10 years ago when Halo Anniversary originally came out and I was trying to get the speed reader achievement. So this is a level that I could definitely improve on. There's not much to talk about. It's mostly just running through hallways and not dying with a couple grenade jumps in between. And waiting at doors. Lots of waiting at doors. You know what? Here's a montage of me waiting at doors. My final time on the library was 16 minutes and 20 seconds. This brings my total time so far to 59 minutes and 34 seconds. Next up, the scariest mission to speedrun. This video was delayed a week specifically because I could not get two betrayals down. I still don't have it down. Part of me doing the video just on two betrayals before this was so I could get more practice on it. Because of that video too, I'll be pretty brief here. If you didn't watch that video and don't know what I'm talking about, pretty much the entire level is just one trick. Kind of like how AOTCR is just one trick and then you can fly to the end. On this level, you can fly straight to the end, but unlike AOTCR, unless you hit every single trigger along the way, the level will not end. The trick you do is called Banshee Out of Level, or Bool. It involves getting into a Banshee out of bounds so that you can fly through the walls. During this time, you have to hit every trigger in order, or again, the level will not end. After hitting triggers, you have to reload each section, and I'm not going to go over each section again. It's just really long, and if you mess any of it up, you are completely screwed. I take an older and safer route than record runs use now, which means I had to learn a second trick, which is to get the Banshee through this door. I play on a controller, and every CE speedrunner I know plays on mouse and keyboard, and this is a trick that I seriously got to the point of wondering if it was possible on a controller. Because there are some tricks that are harder on a controller, and one specifically that you just can't do on a controller. But with enough practice, I pretty much got it down, and the rest of the level is a breeze. The reason this was my fastest run was because it was the only run in this level I've ever done where I did everything first try. I need more practice. But my final time on two betrayals was 13 minutes and 32 seconds. This brings my total time to 1 hour 13 minutes and 6 seconds. Next up is a level that should be really hard but is actually the shortest in the game, spoiler alert. Keys isn't just short. It's really short. I mentioned a trick called flood bumping that I neglected in the library, but here I will do one because it's the most amazing thing ever. This flood you can manipulate into spawning as a reviver, which means he'll play dead before getting back up. You can use the physics from him getting back up to bump you through walls. 
Rather than playing through the level normally and jumping out of the ship and into the goo and working your way back in, we can just flood bump to skip straight to where you find Captain Keys. There's a long, unskippable cutscene here, and I'll take this time to mention that I'm doing timing through the Master Chief Collection, and the MCC actually does it differently here than you'd see on the leaderboards on HaloRuns.com. MCC doesn't add this cutscene to your time, whereas for Halo Runs, you would count it. So my time here is actually deflated. But escaping this room, you throw a distraction grenade and you can run by everyone. Out here, you also run by everyone, and that's Keys. Once you grab one of the Banshees, the level is just on a timer. So my recorded time for Keys, and the one I'll list, is 2 minutes and 17 seconds. If the cutscene was counted, it would be a little over 3 minutes by a couple of seconds. Nonetheless, this brings my total time to 1 hour, 15 minutes, and 23 seconds. Next up is the last level of the game and the introduction of what we call 360 swag. Because of my struggles with TB, I was actually delayed on learning the Maw. So I recorded this run on Saturday, which is also the day I learned how to run it. I get an okay time, but this is another one that I think I could easily improve on with more practice. It's funny, this level is a lot like Pillar of Autumn. There's a lot of running past enemies, and most of the time you'll make it, but there's occasionally complete BS that happens. There's an out-of-bounds trick on this level that you'll see the really good runners do, but it's the trick I mentioned earlier that you can't do on a controller, and I play on controller. So yeah. There's also a trick called Cafe Bump that I could learn, but because I was learning this level the same day I was needing to record it, I did not take any time to learn Cafe Bump. For my run, this level was very straightforward. A couple of grenade jumps, otherwise just trying to run fast and kill guys. There was one trick that I practiced, and that was during the Warthog run. There's a big jump, and if you go straight, there's a high chance that you'll flip. You can prevent this by doing a 360. That was more like a 340, but I'll take it. There's another trick called barrels, which is just if you drive the right way, you can actually get the Warthog through the barrels. I screwed it up, so I got out and ran for it. And that's the Maw. My time was 10 minutes exactly. With a 10 minute time on the Maw, that brought my final time with all my best runs added up to 1 hour, 25 minutes, and 23 seconds. It's worth noting that this is incomparable to a legitimate full game run. For starters, my times were my best from each level added together. If you're doing a full game, you're not going to get your best time on every level. There's also just extra time added in, like cutscenes that I didn't have. Nonetheless, my time is over twice as fast as needed for the goat rope achievement, and I beat my goal of 90 minutes by almost 5 minutes. I also improved on the Naked Eli runs I used to use for help by 17 minutes. If I was hypothetically invited to GDQ to do a full game run, would I get an hour and 25 minutes? No. However, I would be confident that I could do better than 4 hours and not have to drop the difficulty to normal. But putting the times and all that stuff aside, I think the main draw for me doing speedrunning was that it was actually really fun. And it was exciting to practice levels and see my times get faster and faster. Going from 23 minutes on TNR to 11.38 was pretty awesome. The next steps for me are to get better at the stuff I already know how to do like bool or drop skip and learn all the new tricks. And as we went through, I pointed out ones that I don't know how to do yet. That should be something I work on changing. If you're still watching to this point, I'm assuming you like my channel, or at least this video, so I'll let you know that I will livestream myself trying speedruns and learning tricks in the future if you'd like to watch and hang out. If you're interested in Halo speedrunning, go to haloruns.com. I'll link other resources in the description, and I'll catch you all next time.